the greatest battle of the last great war. Forward! The future would be decided between a young soldier. You promised peace and victory. I can't deliver. And the man sent to kill him. How are you gonna find this young man? I'll fix it so that he's the one who finds me. Come on! It's the story of this incredible duo in the midst of this huge battle and I was very fascinated by the fact that it was about sharpshooters. There's always been something kind of mythical about the sniper, it's like this lone warrior and that's something that appealed to me as an actor. I mean these guys sit for hours waiting for the right moment. So, in the film, there is this very intimate struggle going on within this huge invasion. I've never worked on a film of this scale. When you walk into Red Square, and you step into another world. These people have been put into very extraordinary circumstances. It was the turning point of the war, and it changed the whole course of history. If you kill him. You can win the war for us. Autumn 1942. The Nazis are at the height of their power. Hitler's armies are charging through the Soviet Union towards the oil fields of Asia. One last obstacle remains. A city on the Volga where the fate of the world is being decided. Stalingrad. This is the backdrop of the suspense thriller, Enemy at the Gates, starring Joseph Fiennes, Jude Law, Rachel Weisz, Bob Hoskins, and Ed Harris. When they retreat, you fire at them. The film is directed by Jean-Jacques Hanot, who was drawn to the true-life characters that inspired the story. One of my writers came to me with great enthusiasm after having read three pages in a very thick history book dealing with the Second World War and with that extraordinary story of this duel between a Russian sniper and an aristocratic sharpshooter from Germany. It was a duel set in the siege of Stalingrad. Stalingrad was one of the biggest and bloodiest battles of World War II and in the midst of this huge battle there were two men who were hunting each other down and the outcome of their duel would help to determine the outcome of the war. The film opens with the harrowing transport of thousands of Russian soldiers across the Volga River to Stalingrad. The recruits were packed onto steamers, barges, whatever they could find to just ferry them across the river. All that under a deluge of shells and bombs and explosions. Among the troops is a young sharpshooter named Vasily Zaitsev. In casting this role, Anno was looking for an actor who could convey both humanity and intensity. Now we are back on Vasily. I met a lot of people and uh, I had seen an early cut of uh, the talented Mr. Ripley. And I loved uh, Jude. He's such an incredible actor, you know, he's remarkable. Originally after Ripley, I wanted to take a break to be with my family and I wanted to take the time out to really choose something that appealed to me from the heart and from the guts. And when I read this and met with Jean-Jacques, there was such a good story and such an interesting subject matter, and it was a type of film I'd never been in before. There's such a fierce intelligence and, and liveliness in Jude's eyes that he can also be very quiet and internal. And Jude understood that it was about finding the complexity within the silence and the stillness because in fact, to be a sniper is very much about a man of action through stillness. By the time Vasily arrives in Stalingrad, the Nazis have a distinct edge, and Soviet morale is at an all-time low. Join your German comrades. They understand your suffering and will care more for you than your own officers. Leading the Russians in their seemingly futile defense is Nikita Khrushchev, played by Bob Hoskins. If the Germans capture this city, the entire country will collapse. The Germans are just overrunning the place, it's, and the Russians are in a, an appalling state. It was the most awful battle of the war. I want our boys to raise their heads. Give them hope! 
Joseph Fiennes plays Danilov, an idealistic Russian officer. You must tell magnificent stories, stories that exalt sacrifice and bravery. He passionately speaks about his belief in getting the troops to turn the grave situation in Stalingrad around. We need to make examples, but examples to follow. What we need are heroes. Do you know any heroes? Thank you. You got my commissar. Danilov finds the perfect inspiration in Vasily. Vasily Zaitsev. Armed only with a rifle, he quickly made the fascist invader realize that from now on, he would be punished for every step he took in the motherland. Vasily represents the ultimate hero and the symbol of someone that could instill hope and belief, belief in a victory amongst the other troops, because his skills as a sniper were unparalleled. His ability to take down the opposition seemed to be never-ending, and so they created this kind of war hero out of him. Hey, Vasily Zaitsev shot his 20 colonel shot by Vasily He is an example to us all. Hey, Vasily Zaitsev killed his 32nd colonel. He has the patience of a... Creating battle-torn Stalingrad was one of the greatest challenges for the filmmakers, who originally looked for an existing location in which to shoot. Stalingrad doesn't exist anymore. And frankly, there is no place where I could have shot that. After scouting 18 countries and going to all those cities in the, in, of Eastern Europe and destroyed districts of Czechoslovakia, of Lithuania, uh, I didn't find anything, of course, you know, because what's destroyed is destroyed. So we ended up realizing that we had to build it. In terms of where to build it, that was an epic journey in and of itself. The prospect of building a set of this scale was daunting. And then they came to Germany, and it had everything in terms of what we were looking for physically. Our major problem was the river crossing. We knew we would have to build Stalingrad, but we, we couldn't build the river and we couldn't find one. We walked up and down the Rhine, the Volga, lots of rivers. None of them were any good. And so we found these open mining pits towards the Polish border, and they're perfect. These are some of the biggest sets, the tallest sets that I've ever worked on. And it's sort of comparative to Titanic. There's a few of us who have worked on Titanic and stuff like that. So size-wise, it's sort of comparative. And time-wise, to get sets prepared, it's, it's quite comparative. I think all of our reaction walking onto that set was just one of being overwhelmed. And to walk into Red Square, I mean, the story started to come alive. Fire! The fight to dominate Stalingrad went on for months, and the ultimate outcome was constantly in question. One has to understand that in the Battle of Stalingrad, territory shifted daily. The Germans would take maybe a factory or Red Square, and then the Russians would take it back. So for a lot of the troops on the front line, it was very, very difficult to gauge where the front line was because it wouldn't shift so often. Amidst the chaos, Vasily uses his unparalleled skills as a sniper to take down the Nazis with deadly accuracy. I had to promote 25 sergeants to replace the officers shot down by their sharpshooters. Those snipers are demoralizing my people. Ed Harris plays Major Koenig, the German sharpshooter sent to hunt down Vasily. Vasily is picking off German officers with some regularity and is becoming a bit of a folk hero for the Russian soldiers as well as the Russian populace. And it's getting to the point where he's getting too much attention and he's killing too many people. And so I try to find him. The casting of Ed Harris opposite Jude Law resulted in a striking visual link between their characters. They both have these unbelievably penetrating blue eyes. And Jean-Jacques began to see the duel through their eyes. And it's incredible. The first time that we had Ed Harris on set, one of the first shots was a close-up of his eyes. And for all of us, it felt like the movie just came together right there. 
I know exactly where he's waiting for me. As the cat and mouse chase unfolds between Vasily and Koenig, the film illustrates the strategy of the sniper. And that's another great side to the story, that it, it, it really looks in detail at how snipers work. Something about sniping which is very interesting is the patience that goes into being a sniper, that you have to maybe stay in the same place for two hours or two days. It's about tranquility and stillness in the midst of a battle which is going faster than anything can really be imagined in real life. And so while history is being remade in seconds, the fact that this movie is about a duel that moves over days and weeks, I think establishes a very unique rhythm. Yeah, I quite like that. In preparing to play expert sharpshooters, Law and Harris went through a special training course. Once I got involved in the project, I went down to the UK uh, training ground for the forces in England and I studied with a couple of snipers there. When you have to carry a rifle every day for 16, 17 weeks, you, you have to get used to how to carrying it, uh, how to strip it, how to load it, fire it. I immersed myself in it when I got here and I had a rifle that I was given that I could practice the bolt action and practice with the scope and holding it steady and it's more than a prop, I mean, it's part of the man. The actual technique of the sniper was something that took a little longer and a little bit more studying. The silence, the breathing, choosing the right spots, um, how long and how slowly it takes them to reveal themselves and to remove themselves from a spot and things like that. Look, Vasily, he's hiding in the department store over there. The goal of director Anou was to create a unique visual look for the sniper sequences. Jean-Jacques painted the kind of tension of the moment very clearly and would concentrate either purely on my eyes or on the rifle or how I was hidden and indeed the same with what Ed was doing. The camera is looking through the scopes and even though you're distant, it becomes very, very intimate. So I think the tension will be created cinematically that way. Along with the thriller aspect of the story, the film explores the human side of war. The scariest thing and the most interesting thing about the Second World War was that it was relevant to every man and every woman. It didn't matter whether you were a, a wannabe soldier, a kind of born-to-be soldier, it affected your life. It's such a montagna. The Germans are throwing everything at us. If they're lucky, one in ten of these soldiers will come back alive. Rachel Weiss plays a young woman who volunteers to help in the war effort. When I first read the script, it was very unusual to uh, find a war film with a woman that was a soldier. Our militia is responsible for all the people in this neighborhood. I'm already desperately short of men. She's literally protecting the people she grew up with. I, I recognize you. It's Vasily Zaitsev. When she meets Vasily, he has just a natural intelligence, a natural instinct. Every cup of tea, every cigarette, <laughs> becomes a little celebration. Because for a lot of us, it may be our last night. I think in, in a lot of war movies we have love stories, but somehow it's the part of the story that's not involved in the battle. This is in the midst of battle. Tell me where he is. Stay into that pipe. Tanya, stay in. Stay in. Get your head in. And when you don't know if you're going to see the next day, to some extent they are trying to live out their entire lives every day. For Ano, making this film offered the opportunity to explore the drama behind a key turning point in history. For me, each movie is the occasion to learn, and it becomes something I in inside myself. <laughs> Georgia has huge amounts of energy. He's always full of life, full of anecdotes. His head is crammed full of stories from this period in history. I mean, he knows, I would say, everything there is to know about this subject matter. And you know, in those days, on the radio, he became famous in nine days. Jean-Jacques, he is motivated by character and narrative. And that's always exciting because it can lead to kind of wonderful places. <laughs> oh, that's great. He's openly enthusiastic, which, which appeals to my heart because I'm kind of the same, so you, we can be overly enthusiastic together. <laughs> the visual spectacle of the film is showcased in a series of action set pieces. 
You see aircraft, uh, boats, uh, guns going, tanks, people running, falling, explosions everywhere. We've done scenes in, in this particular setting with over 500, 600 extras, and being one of 600 people dressed the same, surrounded by mortars and machine gun fire, is a really nightmarish experience. For the cast and crew, the emotional experience was compounded by the harsh physical conditions. We started shooting at the end of January, and the cast and crew, they were having to work in the most excruciating conditions. It's the kind of film where we're in quite difficult physical circumstances, very, very cold, very, very muddy, very, very dusty. We're trudging in mud uh, under rain, it's windy, it's cold. It was under these grueling conditions that the filmmakers set out to stage the unprecedented battle sequences in and around Red Square. I mean, I've done some enormous films, but yes, this is probably the biggest. The amount of weaponry we have, the amount of bullets we've fired, we've got all these extras and vehicles. We need smoke, good smoke is in, in this background here. We had an extensive amount of smoke and fire. We did a calculation of 250,000 gallons of smoke oil alone, and that's, that's, that's going some. Okay. Is, this the, is this the explosion that's, that's the one send that's killed, me? No, that's the one that's killed Stefan. To shoot the most complex attack scene, the set was turned into a virtual minefield. We had 25 explosions to go off in a crowd of 380 soldiers. 380 soldiers of which 40% of them were Russians and didn't speak German. The rest of them were Germans and don't speak English. So the possibilities of a huge, great screw-up were enormous. So I had 20 stuntmen mixed in amongst everybody and they were actually setting off the explosions themselves by treading on foot plates just as they jumped over the explosion so they could react to that. Okay, let's go! With so much preparation involved, the director's goal was to capture the spectacular charge from every angle. I've got seven cameras uh, in different angles, different sizes. All the special effects we're going to have, uh, you know, explosions everywhere, uh, people firing blanks but still firing with, you know, the flames, the noise. It's scary. Let's one, take two. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. And action. <laughs> For all of its large-scale action, the power of Enemy at the Gates ultimately lies with its characters. The different charges or big scenes that we have, of course, uh, they are spectacular on screen, but I'm not interested in the sheer war aspect. Where I want to be is with my main characters, see what is it they feel inside those charges. That is interesting for me. You've promised people a victory I can't deliver. I don't stand a chance against this man. Stalingrad, the epic, is a backdrop to a far more intimate story. And I think that's where the potency and the dynamic of the story lies. The fate of the motherland is at risk! The fate of all those you love and cherish! It's just an extraordinary tale. Just the nobility of these people's spirits, that they were willing to fight and die. I want to fight as a regular soldier. A young man, a regular soldier. No one shirts like you, Vasily. It's been an extraordinary journey for me as an actor because you have the opportunity to get as close as you can to experiencing what it was like to be there. Let me go! Kill you and then you kill me too! It seems your destinies are entwined. Where is he? Where is Vasily? He's dead. He isn't dead because I haven't killed him yet. 